Hey, it's Chris. Today, I wanna to take some time to explain some of the most important new iPad OS features because I think there's genuinely some aha moments to be had, some new ways of looking at things, just some cool insights to uncover. And let's start with multitasking. iPad OS 15 adds some neat features like a new multitasking menu, a shelf that appears and shows all open instances of an app, the ability to center certain things like emails and more. Now, it's not that iOS 14 couldn't multitask, it's just that in order to do it, you had to either discover these multitasking features or be told about them. With iPadOS 15, there's really only one thing that you need to know or memorize in order to do basic multitasking, and that is to find and tap the three dots that now appear at the top of any open app. So needing now to know less, just that one thing, but still being able to do more is textbook Apple simplification. Quick Note is a new feature that's pretty self-explanatory. You can drag up from the corner of an iPad on any screen to jot down a note quickly, including being able to add and link highlighted text on websites. And then all those quick notes will be automatically organized into a quick notes folder within your Apple Notes. Additionally, you can also use a keyboard shortcut or a button in the control center to activate quick notes. And there's also a new tagging system within notes as well. Now, the closest thing that we had in iPad OS 14 was making notes from the lock screen, but obviously that's not where you spend the majority of your time on the lock screen. Basically what Apple's doing here is making note taking omnipresent. So in a way, every app is functionally a note taking app now. And all the better if you have your paper like screen projector installed for that real paper sound and feel when using your Apple Pencil. I really like the idea of Quick Notes because what it does is significantly lower the barrier between having an idea and capturing an idea. And that capturing is important because ideas are more or less temporary until you get them written down. I saw a really interesting quote that had to do with ideas. And I wanna share it here because I think it's relevant. It was likening an idea to moving a chess piece forward. Now, that piece might get beaten, but it could also be the first move in a winning game. And for me, at least, I feel like Quick Notes is gonna make it a lot easier to potentially start that winning game. Hey, if you're liking the vibe of this video, this is a great time to get subscribed. If you're not, I look at the analytics, I see a bunch of people are not subscribed, do it because I have a bunch of really great iPad accessories up in the office waiting to get shown off on this channel, and I don't want you to miss it. iPad OS 15 brings the ability for widgets to finally fully live amongst apps. And not only that, but there's a new larger widget size along with some new widgets for Find My, for Contacts, for Game Center, and others. Now, widgets on iOS 14 were doomed to live inside a sidebar on the left side of the home screen, and it just seemed like an unintuitive and limited implementation. So this is an obvious improvement. Obviously, one of the main benefits of the new widget situation is that it allows for further personalization of your iPad experience. So you could even have a whole page just of widgets. But more interestingly, that new larger widget size is more immersive. And so that can help you find more information at a glance with less digging and effort, which could actually end up saving you some valuable time. With this update, the iPad now gets its own app library that automatically organizes all the apps on the iPad and that now lives permanently on the right side of your dock. The app library was easily one of the best features to come to iPhones in iOS 14. In iPadOS 14, you still have to manually create and populate folders. But there's one important difference in the app library that's on iPads versus on iPhones, and that is because of the larger screen, you're actually able to see more apps, if not all your apps and folders at a glance all at once. And the main benefit here is that users are gonna be able to worry about the substance of their apps, their actual work, rather than the organization and the presentation of those apps. Safari is getting a lot of updates across the board. The big changes are the new tab design, which combines three things into one, tabs, the toolbar, and the search field. Those have merged. Additionally, tab groups will organize groups of sites for focused browsing sessions and those sync across all your devices. But even cooler, web extensions have finally arrived on the iPad. In iPadOS 14, Safari allowed for a web browsing experience that was straightforward in a conventional way, very familiar. With 15, it's still straightforward, but in a smarter and more streamlined way that really does seem different than other browsers. What I like about this Safari redesign is that it's not just different for the sake of being different. There's a real purpose for the redesign. And right off the top of the head, you can just realize that you're able to see more of any given web page, which is great. And on top of that, these extensions could be the earthquake that let Chrome users shake free as long as we get more useful plugins than what's currently available for Safari on the Mac. 
But honestly, I think there's a fair chance that we will because a developer can now develop a plugin for the iPhone, the iPad, and the Mac all at once, much easier. Spotlight Search is getting a nice update with 15 because it weeds out some middle steps for certain workflows. So take photos. Instead of opening photos, searching within the Photos app, or visually scanning through your photos for text that you might be looking for within a photo, you can just search for all of that right from the home screen. Saves you a bunch of steps. Focus is a cool new feature that filters both notifications and apps depending on a context. So you can actually set up different home screens with different apps for work or for family time, for instance, and only certain apps and contacts can reach you with notifications depending on the focus. And that of course will sync across all your different devices. The way I've been thinking about focus is that it's kind of like providing rooms for your devices. In the real world, when I need to get some work done, I go to the office and my Xbox isn't there being a distraction and neither are my best friends. So focus is a similar concept in that it's a space, the best space to do a particular task. Universal control is a new feature that lets you control multiple devices like a couple Macs and an iPad with just one keyboard and mouse. Now, I actually have a whole lot to say about universal control. In fact, my last video was basically dedicated to it and the implications because I think there's a lot. We can learn a lot about the way Apple views the whole ecosystem right now, in my view, from universal control. So I'll link that up for you guys down in the description so you can continue down the deep dive. Obviously, this wasn't every feature that's new that came to iPadOS 15, but I tried to keep it narrowed down to the things that I either found most interesting or that I could add some kind of new frame to to help you guys think about it in a different way, add a little bit of value. So hopefully that was the case, but I'll probably end up exploring a lot more of the WWDC announcements, not just from the iPad, in the next episode of the podcast. So if you're not subscribed, this would be a good time to do that. Otherwise, thanks for hanging out. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I love hanging out with people at the premieres of these. So if you missed the premiere for this video, that's another reason why you might consider getting subscribed. And now I'm off to unbox some really fun iPad accessories that are gonna start showing up on the channel very shortly. I'll catch you guys later.